this here that is uh, the refrigeration and air conditioning topic which is there for uh, the first semester students of all B B Tech students. So today we'll be discussing regarding the basic concepts of refrigeration. Then the terms related to refrigeration that is the refrigerant coefficient of performance. Then discussing the relative coefficient of performance, refrigerating effect, ice heating capacity. Then many other things. So if you have any queries, here you have seen I have left my email IDs. So you can post me to this email ID, see your queries, or you can send me a message, WhatsApp message to this number also, which is available on the screen, students. Okay, students, let us begin the today's session by discussing some of the points with respect to the refrigerator, refrigeration topic. So initially, what is refrigeration? So in the olden days and today's also, we are, today also we are observing that at our home and our mom, mother, boils the milk, she uses it for she uses it for different purposes such as for making coffee, tea and all and afterwards you can see that after some amount of time she is keeping in the refrigerator that is also bottom of the freezer section. At the same time if you see the other food nutrients also they are stored in the refrigerator itself. So what happens if you observe the refrigerator process carefully you can see that within the refrigerator that the temperature drop is very less there is a cold environment when compared to the outside atmosphere. So, because of this coldness environment itself, what you can say that uh, you can prevent the food materials from spoiling very early. From spoiling very early, you can, spoil, you can prevent these food materials. Not only food materials, we have seen in the hospitals, the blood banks, there the blood is stored in the blood banks, the, some of the organs, medicines, and many other things they are stored in the refrigeration itself. Why? To prevent the damage that is the spoiling period and improve and try to extend their food products life. So if you see here one picture here students, you can see here that there is a hot cup of tea. And in this hot cup of tea, if you see here initially it is having some temperature. If I keep this hot cup of tea in the room for say around uh, half an hour say 30 minutes, after 30 minutes if you observe the temperature of that particular tea, it is almost the same as the room temperature. Means the tea has attained the room temperature case. If you observe here, students, when the tea was very, very hot, here you can see some amount of uh, smoke is going, that is in the form of vapor is going. We can say that it is the gaseous space. So, this gaseous space was when the temperature is very high. When the same tea it attained the room temperature, you know that it attains which type of phase at room temperature? The tea attains the liquid phase. The tea will attain the liquid phase. Do you agree with me at this point? The tea will acquire the liquid phase. Now, now, say my room temperature is say around 30 degrees Celsius, students. Now, what I will do is, I will try to reduce this temperature again, lesser than 30 degrees Celsius. I will go lesser than 30 degrees Celsius. Say, uh, I will go up to around temperature of say around uh, 5 degrees Celsius, students. Or say zero, I'll go directly. Zero, I'll go. Zero degrees Celsius. Then what happens to the tea present in the cup? Initial 30 degrees Celsius, it was in the liquid phase. Now it becomes in the solid phase, almost in the form of an ice cube itself. So why this has happened? Why whatever the heat was present in that particular ice, I have taken that tea, I have taken it out. Due to which what happens? The temperature of that particular liquid, it had dropped and it get converted into the solid phase that is the ice cube structure. So in very simple words, what I can say here students is the process of removal of heat, the process of removal of heat, it may be in a space, if it is a big room, it may be a substance that is a material, it may be, it may be a food material or any other material or a system, it may be a device also or a system to maintain a lower temperature maintain lower temperature and maintain this temperature very well below the surroundings. So if the temperature of that particular system and you take out, its temperature should be seen that it should be lower and compared to the surroundings. Then what happens? We call that particular process as refrigeration process. So system two, here on what is missing students, it should be lower temperature. It should be lower temperature. 
So suppose I say that if this is my refrigerator restaurants, here is I have kept some food materials. Okay, some food materials I have kept here. And this is my outside room. This is my it I kept this in a kitchen. This is my kitchen. This red or not, this is my kitchen. So the room temperature of this kitchen says restaurants, it is around 35 degrees Celsius. Then when I extract the heat of the food motor charge present inside this refrigerator, inside this refrigerator, inside this refrigerator, inside this refrigerator, the temperature should drop what by extracting the heat, it should drop below 35 degrees Celsius. Inside the refrigerator, the temperature should be less than 35 degrees Celsius continuously, and that extracted heat. It should be rejected in the kitchen surroundings. It should be rejected in the kitchen surroundings. Then that particular process we call it as refrigeration process. So you can see here, you can see here there are two food materials. So in one plate there is a fish, and there is ice cream and fruits. You can see here these arrow marks are nothing but the heat which is present in these materials. It is being extracted and it is rejected out of this refrigerator. That is to the surroundings by this water pens. The temperature of those food materials in the refrigerator it reduces, and because of this, there is a cold environment developed inside the refrigerator. And to do this entire phenomena, students, we need an external agent or a working medium. We call that particular medium as a refrigerant. We call that particular medium as a refrigerant. So the function of this refrigerant response is it is a medium or a working substance. Whose function is what? It has to abstract, it has to extract the heat from the food materials where they are kept inside the refrigerator. And whatever the heat is extracted, it takes that heat from the food materials, it circulates and comes and rejects this heat to the surroundings. So this heat should be less than temperature, atmospheric temperature, and then it is rejected to the surroundings. So therefore, in simple words, we can say that refrigerant nothing but a medium or a working substance whose main function is to extract the heat from the space of the refrigerator within inside the refrigerator seeing that conditions that the temperature should drop down the temperature should drop down less than the atmospheric temperature and this heat which is extracted inside the refrigerator it has to be rejected it has to be given out where it has to be given out it has to be given out to the surroundings so all this is done by a working medium or an agent, we call it as refrigerant. It is the thing what a chemical substance. So in the next classes, we'll be seeing regarding what is this refrigerant and all. Now, moving ahead, students. Terminology, some of the terms related to the refrigerants. The first term is ton of refrigeration. Students, please keep in mind, like in your vehicles, when you are measuring the efficiency of your vehicles in the terms of mileage, that is, one liter of petrol gives 50 kilometers of uh, mileage for your vehicles. Similarly, here also in the refrigerators, this word that is ton of refrigeration, it is telling you regarding uh, its uh, performance itself, or you can see its mileage efficiency. So here, here in simple words, what does it turn of refrigeration? It means that the first important thing is quantity of heat absorbed. Please note down this point, students. Turn means not the mass, it is the thing, but the quantity of heat absorbed to form what? One ton of ice in 24 hours. That is the second factor. Quantity of heat absorbed in order to form one ton of ice in 24 hours. The condition where the initial temperature of water is how much? Zero degrees Celsius. So therefore, what you can say, ton of refrigeration is defined as the amount of heat absorbed the amount of heat absorbed in order to form the amount of first factor, remember always remember in your mind, amount of heat absorbed in order to form one ton of ice for 24 hours, provided the initial temperature of water should be zero degrees Celsius. Many times when you visit the shops and electric shops, you are visiting many number of refrigerators and on your refrigerators, they are writing some words of stones. So if you have observed carefully, there will be some star-like symbols on your refrigerators, like this. 
one star, two star, three star, four star. So one star means it is less efficient, means there is more power consumption, less efficient, more power consumption. And as the star ratings go on increasing, that is three, four, five, three, four, five, as the star ratings goes on increasing, it means they are more efficient, more efficient with less power consumption. So more stars means efficiency is good and the power consumption also decreases. So that is the reason that the government has made the rules and regulations for every electronic devices to give the five star ratings regarding the power consumption factor. So if you are purchasing a refrigerator, you should see for good star ratings, which means it consumes a less amount of power. So here in the definition we just now discussed uh, the quantity of heat absorbed. So generally the heat which you are absorbing, we are discussing in terms of joules itself. So now if I convert this one in terms of the joules, quantity of heat absorbed for every 24 hours to form one ton of ice when the initial temperature is zero degrees Celsius, then the amount of energy required that is one TOR is equal to how much? 210 kilojoules per unit is required or in terms of seconds or watts it is 3.5 kilowatts, it's around 3.5 kilowatts strands. So this is a very, very important factor. Then, the next term is discussing regarding the performance of an refrigerator, we call it as coefficient of performance. So in the coefficient of performance, again, we are discussing with respect to the amount of heat absorbed in a system to the work supplied, work input. So mathematically, if I write the expression for this one, COP is equal to Q by W, where Q is the amount of heat absorbed, Q is the amount of heat absorbed, and work is the W supplied, W is the thing but the work input supplied. So in, in this case, refrigerator, whatever the amount of electric power you are supplying to your refrigerator, it is the thing but the work supplied itself. So therefore, I can write this as heat removed from the body, it is from the substances, so the amount of work supplied, this is one term, second term. Now third term, relative COEP. It is nothing but the ratio of actual coefficient of performance to the theoretical coefficient of performance. So whenever we design our operator students, we are having some of our mathematical calculations and on designing it, we have some conclusions that our refrigerator will produce this much amount of COP. But that much amount of calculation which you have done theoretically, it can be valid only when we take some practical cal practical readings, that is when we conduct the experiments. So this actual COP is thing, but when the refrigerator is working and we are getting some values practically, and those values are comparing with the theoretical values, then we say that the resulting term which we get, it is the thing but the relative COP students. That is relative COP is equal to actual COP by theoretical COP. Then, refrigerating effect. This is another term students. Here also we are very much interested regarding the amount of heat absorbed with respect to the time he has discussed. The rate at which the amount of heat is absorbed for one cycle to form the interior space to be cooled. So for every one cycle students, every one cycle, the heat which is absorbed to cool that entire system, we call it as the refrigerating effect. Another term students, Ice making capacity. Ice making capacity is a thing, but it is the capacity of a refrigerating system and it is responsible for making the ice beginning from the water for its solid temperature, that is, to form a solid ice. So, capacity of refrigerating system to make ice beginning from water to the solid state, that is, ice formation, we call it as ice making capacity. Then, principle of refrigeration fronts. This is very, very important. So I said just now that uh, the main purpose of the refrigeration is in the refrigerator, whatever the food material is there, that food material, we extract the heat. That is, by extracting the heat, what happens? The temperature of the food material, it drops. So by extracting the heat continuously, there is a drop in the temperature that is low temperature substance. Why? Because from the food, we are extracting that particular temperature. And whatever the heat we are extracting that particular food material, 
we are giving it to the surroundings why then the excess amount of heat whatever sorry the amount of heat which you have absorbed from the food materials it has to be given out and that it is done by rejecting to the surroundings that is behind the refrigerator we call it as high temperature zone so to do this it is not a natural phenomena the first slide i was showing you regarding the hot cup of tea in the hot cup of tea it attained the room temperature how naturally itself because we know that heat flows from hot zone to cold zone but now if you observe this point starts here what it says this point the heat has to flow from where low temperature zone to high temperature zone it cannot be done naturally naturally so what we take we take the help of an working device that we call it as a compressor so the function of this compressor is to see that it circulates the refrigerant which extracts the heat from a lower temperature zone lower temperature zone that is the food and rejects the heat to the higher temperature zone that is the surrounding refrigerant that is the surrounding atmosphere so this compressor what it is pumping it is pumping a refrigerant and the main phenomenon of this refrigerant response it is a, it is a chemical substance which is responsible for exchanging the heat as it passes through a cycle so it is a chemical substance which circulates in a cycle to carry out a series of events in that all students the important is this one the change of phase remember this students always the refrigerants which you are using they undergo two types of phase change one is from liquid to vapor phase by extracting the heat from the food materials and again rejecting the heat to the atmosphere where it gets converted from vapor to liquid phase so many times you have seen when i have kept or you have seen when a water is boiling in a container so just i will show you a small picture here students say this is a vessel inside this vessel what i am doing i am keeping a uh, water and i am supplying some heat here continuously from the bottom so you can see here the water reaches the boiling point and you know the boiling point of water is 100 degrees celsius for atmospheric temperature after reaching also 100 degrees celsius if i go on supplying the heat what happens this water which is there it gets converted into vapor form that is how it is absorbing the heat energy and it gets converted into this vapor similarly here also students the refrigerant when it is passing around the food items which are present in the refrigerator it absorbs the heat from the food materials and it gets converted to liquid to vapor phase by absorbing the heat from the food and it goes behind the refrigerator and there it is rejecting the heat to the surroundings so once once it rejects the heat to the surroundings that particular vapor refrigerant vapor phase the heat that particular refrigerant it gives back its heat to the surroundings and there it condenses it condenses to form to reach back to the liquid phase and this cycle goes on continuously and again it condenses back to the vapor phase to liquid phase so this cycle that is conversion from liquid to vapor phase by extracting the heat and by rejecting the heat that is vapor phase to liquid phase it the process repeats continuously again and again by maintaining the low temperature within the given space and this is the principle of refrigeration do remember these points carefully especially in the refrigeration part you can say that the refrigeration here the first important thing is the heat has to be extracted from low temperature zone that is the food and supply to high temperature zone with the help of a mechanical device we call it as compressor the function of this compressor is it is pumping the refrigerant which is a chemical substance which passes or circulates in a cycle where it absorbs the heat to form from a liquid to vapor state by absorbing the heat from the food materials and it rejects the heat to the surroundings where again it converts gets converted from vapor phase to liquid phase and this cycle continues as a result what happens this process repeats to have lower temperatures in the given space hope these points are clear to all students today we shall stop here only students in the next class we will be discussing regarding parts of a refrigerator as well as 
two types of refrigeration processes. Okay, we shall stop here, students. Thank you.